Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Right, let's take a look at the Premier League away kits release for the new season. Every year, most of them look like complete and utter horse vomit, but you never know. Maybe this time they might prove me wrong. And yes, I realise the irony of someone grading football kits when they themselves have the fashion sense of a dead duck, so don't even bother pointing that one out. Oh, and by the way, Burnley, Fulham and Leeds haven't released their away kits yet, so sorry about that, lads. I'm sure they'll look just fine. Arsenal B. Right, here we have the Arsenal away kit, and you know what? This is a surprisingly good start. I actually quite like it. Sure, it looks dramatic but isn't that what the Arsenal fan base are? There's about 15 lines of blood spattered across the shirt, but considering most of the Arsenal fans probably have regular nosebleeds themselves watching the state of their defence, this is probably fitting. It doesn't so much look like a Premier League kit as it does a goddamn Halloween costume, but I still like it. Although again, please stop telling me to visit Rwanda. I'm not going to go. I can barely afford the bastard mega bus. And also, it's a bit weird asking Mesut Ozil to model the kit, considering he's probably only going to wear it about four times a season. Aston Villa E. Okay, here's the Aston Villa away kit, and I'm sorry, but this looks like it was knitted by my nan, which would be an achievement considering she has crippling arthritis and hasn't been alive since 1993. But look at this, it's like an ill-fitting tennis shirt and they're charging 90 quid, 90 quid to have kazoo written on your chest with a bunch of red grid lines and a logo that looks like a failing marriage? No thank you. Brighton D. Okay, I'm sorry, but this is Leeds. That is a Leeds United away kit, it just is. I know footballers don't have the reputation for having the brains of a nuclear scientist, but still, does the Brighton chairman actually think this would trick Ben White into thinking he's still at Ellen Road? Give him a little credit. It. You're acting like his mother kept eating Vaseline sandwiches during the pregnancy. I'm pretty sure he knows the difference. As for the actual kid, nothing is more intimidating than traveling to an away Premier League ground looking like 11 squash daffodils. Just ask Adam Lallana. For the past six years, the man has been used to wearing the iconic dignified red of Liverpool. Now he looks like a smashed up egg yolk littered with Smurf spunk. Although, never mind the design. Last week, Chelsea traveled to Brighton at the MX Stadium and the Seagulls still had to wear the goddamn away kit. Such a small time mentality. It's baffling. It's your home stadium. Would you also let them raid through your fridge and sleep in your bed? Good Christ, I'll give this a lazy D. Chelsea E. Okay, this looks like pajamas. And that sponsor, having a big massive three chucked on the front of the kit. Take it from someone whose national dignity was dragged through the mud wearing that ludicrous logo for years. It reduces your team to nothing more than a goddamn billboard. And the fact they've chucked in about a hundred random small diagonal lines, it makes the jersey look like it's just contract and STI. Which is weird considering John Terry retired in 2017. Christ, the colour, it's not white, it's barely even blue. Looks like mouth's just been wrapped in the skin of a dead whale. I'm giving this one an E, good Christ. Chris the Palace. A. Okay, Crystal Palace are a club who unironically sell games of Monopoly, despite the fact they themselves haven't forked out for a half decent striker in over 10 goddamn years. And they also demand 4 quid for a bobblehead of James MacArthur. The only person queuing up to buy that would be his goddamn mother. So you'd imagine that their away kit would also be some overpriced rags. No, no, lads, they are even the best away shirt in the league. If your only job is to design a kit for a multi million pound corporation, the least you can do is put a bit of effort in. Most of these god awful, boring creations look like they were dreamt up in one afternoon, but this Palace shirt, it's actually creative. Even if it does resemble a half empty tube back on fresh. Everton C. Okay, lads, mustard must be one of the most disgusting foods on the planet. So, what genius in the Everton kit team thought they should make that the color of the away jersey? Honestly, this isn't even yellow. It looks like a bit of mucus scraped off the underside of a dog's kidney. Christ above, look at how enthused Tom Davies is about wearing the shirt. He looks like his pet cat is being held at gunpoint slightly off camera. I'm sorry, but nobody took Everton seriously when they had angry birds scribbled on their sleeve. And now, who's gonna fear 11 lemons with kazoo on the front? Also, the collar looks like a goddamn baby grow. Lester B. This one actually isn't too bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, Harvey Barnes looks like he's just backed over his own dog on the way to the photo shoot. And Marco Brighton is squeezing out the biggest four smile of his life. But in terms of the actual kit, it's alright. Decent-ish maroon colour, nice white trims. Although, again, the sponsor, Thailand Smiles With You. I'm a YouTuber in his mid-twenties who hasn't had a home-cooked meal since 2015 and mostly smells of expired cat food. So again, how much smiling do you think I'm doing? Liverpool B. Okay, this is weird, but that doesn't mean it's bad. In a sea of completely boring substandard kids void of any semblance of effort, this jersey actually tickles my wizard stick pink. I've stared at this for 15 minutes straight and I still don't have a clue what the design is. But still, I like it. It'll take a bit of getting used to because seeing Liverpool wear turquoise blue is about as rare as spotting Boris Johnson without a burger in his mouth. Man City A. Okay, just try and ignore Nicholas Onamendi doing his best impression of Tim Sherwood. Christ, who or what is he saluting? Also, ignore his sleeve tattoo, which looks like it was done in 20 minutes by a blind goat. The actual kit, oh, it's beautiful. The black sleeves, the modern design in the middle, and you know what? It actually looks soft. Nice stuff. It almost looks like a jersey made of silk. Although, the fact that an authentic version of this kit, i.e. the one Taylor made for the bodies of professional athletes, then Christ, seeing a 40-year-old plumber who eats his weight in Jaff cakes on a daily basis, I hope he doesn't fork out 105 quid just to make himself look like a lumpy bin bag. Man United B. Okay, this looks similar to the Man City kit, and again, it's quite a nice look. Here's Aaron Wabazaka wearing it over a hoodie for some reason. If he did that on a football pitch, I'm pretty sure he'd be sweating out his nose. Listen, it's a pretty simple kit, nothing too crazy. It's a nice bit of texture on the front. I don't know, 
What do you want me to say? It's all right. Newcastle D. Okay, lads, nothing will ever top the Newcastle Awake from 2009. Here's Steven Taylor looking like a fat custard cream, but the current one, oh, it's not much better. Why clubs keep insisting on the one button at the top of a jersey is beyond me. But the color, uh, excuse me when I get sick of my mouth, it's some sort of sickly yellow. It looks like a bit of cat sick. I cat sick after I just drank an entire bottle of shoe polish. Here's Jamal LaSalle's wearing it. There's a man who knows. He just knows he's wearing a hideous piece of clothing. And again, don't get me started on the sponsor. In big massive lettering, Fun88. What about Newcastle United for the last 13 years has ever been fun? Good Christ, it's like the club's funeral has been dragged out for over a decade. Sheffield United A. You know what lads, I actually quite like this kit. It's got a bit of an Italian vibe, reminding me a bit of Palermo or Juventus. Sure, the Union Jack in the middle of the shirt just screams Brexit, but it's actually a nice looking design. Even if the badge looks like it's stained with stale milk. Well, either milk or the kit designer got a bit too excited when looking at his own creation. But no, don't worry, I'm not accusing the kit makers of having a tug in the production room, alright? So, no, you can't get me on that. Southampton C. Southampton are usually a mixed bag. This, uh, this is definitely strange. It doesn't help that the sponsor looks like his tribal Maori tattoo, meant for 18 year olds on a lad's trip to Malia. And the blue and yellow rims on the sleeve and collar just look weird. But compared to some of these expensive cow packs, then no, I don't think it looks too bad. Tottenham E. Here we have the Tottenham away kit, and how dull and inspired can you get? Words cannot actually portray just how little effort has gone into this. Good Christ, all Spurs have done is just change the colour from white to green. That is literally it. This is just a green shirt with a couple of sponsors and the club bad chucks on it. And they're demanding 70 quid. 70 quid? For what? The design concept must have taken all of three minutes to dream into existence. Actually, not even three. All they've done is just change the colour. Oh, and I'm sorry, add some weird pink and black rims on the sides. That is literally it. If you're actually asking for 70 quid, then put a bit of thought into it at least. Take pride in your product. Cause this is just insulting to the fans. West Brom D. Okay, this doesn't look too dissimilar to last season. It's a bunch of uneven green and yellow lines. Cause obviously as a newly promoted club, you definitely want to look like a visual reminder of Norwich Bastard City. It's like buying a house where all the previous tenants were brutally slaughtered and then just choosing to walk around in their old clothes. Clearly you're asking for trouble. Again, the uneven lines are a no from me, while the sponsor, Ideal Boilers, looks like something straight out of Sunday League. West Ham C. Okay, there's clearly not too much effort chucked in here, but I guess it's not too bad. Two massive maroon chunks bordering the Betway sponsor in the middle. It's not a massive fashion crime, but it's not much to look at either. Could be better, but could also be a lot worse. Wolves A. Okay, usually third kits are the ones where kit creators go a little mental. Maybe they're afforded a little more license to be unique, to turn their fashion white dreams into reality. Probably because the club are only likely to wear it about three times a season. But this is Wolves Away kit. They're gonna wear this every second week, and it's one of the strangest Premier League jerseys I've ever seen. If you ignore the middle, which looks like the result of a paintball ambush, the top and size look like a World Cup kit. Honestly, this looks like a Germany jersey that got mixed up with the River Island atrocity in the wash. But you know what? I strangely think it works. Yeah, it looks weird, but so what? Most of these kits are dripping with unimagination. At least Wolves have gone for something a bit different. Like with Nigeria at the 2018 World Cup, it's good when a team starts to think outside the box with the design. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Let me know. What do you think of these kits? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.